Hi guys, welcome back to For Fest and For Test, Audrey here. Today I would like to jump in and start talking about Christian parenting. I have some uh, tips, tricks to help with things that I've had to kind of navigate through uncharted waters within my own parenting techniques, learning from failures and from good things. I take the good and the bad and I try to grow and learn from that. I have two seven-year-olds, identical twin boys and a seven-year-old boy. I'm very blessed mama, but I do have my hands full. With that being said, a big question that I get a lot is do you tell your kids about demons in the spiritual realm? What age is appropriate for that? I believe that's at each parent's discretion, but I will lay out why I told my kids as soon as possible that demons exist and that spiritual realm is real. The reason is because growing up, my mom, and I know many parents had their parents say this, oh, you know, go to bed, there's nothing there, and we would cry going, there's something in our room, I feel something watching me, I feel scared, the closet's open. That's a spirit of fear, and God says he did not give us a spirit of fear. That was in 2 Timothy 1.7. And that's an important thing to teach kids young, not to discredit that spirit of fear because that's coming from a demonic source or a generational curse. It could be coming from many things, but the biggest thing is if we deny that there's a spiritual realm, they're always going to think it's in their head. They're always going to think that. And not saying that we can't get into our minds, that things can't get into our head. I'm not saying that, but it's laying out the foundation of what is real and what isn't real is going to benefit them in the long term. Because if you don't tell them that demons exist, the world will tell them ghosts exist. And as a parent, we rather tell them the truth so they don't grow up and think that little Susie down the road from the 1800s is a lost soul and she dismisses her family and she stays at the house because it has good memories. Because that's what the world will teach our kids. We need to tell them that little Susie is really a thousand year old ancient Nephilim disembodied spirit demon. And of course, let's, let's calm it down a little bit. We don't have Satan that way, but we can make it more kid friendly while also telling them the truth. The truth will set them up for success. In this world, the world lies a lot and if we're their only place that they can find truth from, we have to be trustworthy. And that's something I've learned. Be trustworthy as a parent and be honest. And tell them the truth because if you don't tell them, the world will. This is something I've completely learned. Also, when kids lay down, not only do we not discredit that the fear is real, remind them of 2 Timothy, that God did not give them spirit of fear. Teach them that when they're feeling this way to pray, a big thing that I do is I taught my kids that they have authority from the Holy Spirit, that they have the authority to tell if, if they wake up and they go, oh, I feel like something's around me. The first thing I tell them to do is take authority over that spirit. Say, get out in the name of Jesus. Something very simple. I don't make it too elaborate. They're little and it is hard for them, but you'd be amazed at what kids can retain. They are incredible. So my boys will stand up and sometimes in unions and Get out in the name of Jesus and I'll hear him yell it because I let them know that when they're alone, they're not ever alone. God is always with them. And if mommy can't be there, God can be there in ways that I will never be able to. So they need to understand that as well. So that if I'm not there for anything, that they know God is there for everything. And of course, as parents, we try to be there as best as we can. But in reality, we can only do so much. We're not omniscient. We're not omnipotent. We aren't the great almighty God. So we need to teach them how to run to God. So another thing is also when dealing with friends, I try to let them know the reason kids can be so cruel, especially in these day and ages, it's not only the way they're being raised, because of course, I'm going to explain, you know, different parents parent different things and teach different things. But a big thing is that they don't realize that behind some of these kids is demons themselves. Again, about the spiritual realm. There is demons in kids. We find out in Acts chapter, or the book of Acts 16, um, 16 through 18, that Paul was casting out a demon from a slave girl who had divination. She was a slave to Satan. She had the spirit of divination and Paul cast out a little girl. Kids can have demons and I'll leave that up there. So for people to say kids can't have demons, yes, they can. And I will show you in the Bible where it says that. And with that being said, I have taught my kids that sometimes behind the kids, why they're mean is there is a spirit because we don't battle against flesh and blood, but about principalities and high places and wicked rulers. And so I try to explain that to my young age. So when they grow up and they feel like they're battling their fellow brothers and sisters, that they need to understand this is a spiritual warfare. So I lay out this, uh, the settings with, okay, ghosts don't exist. Demons are real. 
and that even kids can get demons and that they're protected under the blood of Christ so they don't have to worry. So they're not scared they're gonna get a demon because they're protected because as a parent, I cover them in the blood of Jesus and in the way I live my life to make sure that I don't leave open doors for them. So that's a big thing as parents, we don't wanna leave open doors. So with that being said, I'm trying to see, I wrote down a few notes uh, so I didn't kind of uh, lose my train of thought. I happen to do that sometimes. So I'm trying to remember what else that I wanted to touch upon. And also when it pertains to dreams, kids get dreams it's, and dreams are very spiritual dreams. And in Acts second or Acts chapter two, verse 17, in the last days they dream dreams um, young and old men will dream dreams and visions and people will prophesy. In the last days, God will pour out his spirit on people. And with that being said, we don't also want to discredit their dreams. It wasn't bad pizza they ate. They didn't eat too much sugar before they went to bed. I believe dreams are very, very spiritual. That's at night. We sleep a third of our life, I believe. And that's when God speaks to us. And so we have to discern dreams. Are they from the enemy? Or are they from God? Or are they from the flesh? And I will go into a different video about how I've been studying and what I believe about that with scripturals or scriptures. Sorry, guys. Scriptures to back it up. I need more coffee. <laughs> uh, so, yeah. So I believe dreams are a big deal because my kids will come to me with dreams. There was this Momo thing I know a lot of us parents know about that was going around. And of course, my kids at school, they found out about it. And then they looked it up. And I didn't realize that they had access to look this up. But one well, of my sons had a dream of Momo. I told him to say, get out in the name of Jesus. You're not allowed to be here. I'm covered by the blood of Christ. To take authority over that dream. Let them know dreams have meanings. That is important. And then my other twin son had a dream about three, four months ago, there was meteors coming out of the sky and he said one heading straight towards our house. I didn't discredit him and no, I'm not going to scare him, but I always let him know God is with us and there is something called the rapture where the church will be taken up to be with the Lord. So I encourage my kids with the truth that is in Christ Jesus and let them know that he is coming back for all of us and that is for the wicked and that is not for us. So it's okay to encourage our kids, let them know things are coming upon the earth. Um, it, as parents, it just depends with what age and what you want to do in your household. But for me, that's how I do it with mine. Uh, they are old enough now to understand. And as things get progressively worse, I have to explain things that I never thought that I would have to explain to two seven-year-olds and a nine-year-old. They ask me questions and I realize the world is starting to get to them more than I am. And as a parent, I've been stepping it up in that area to make sure I'm the source they go to, not everybody else, because the world will give you lies. The world is full of lies. The world falls after the father of lies, Satan. So today, that's the only thing I really had to discuss. I'm gonna do a part two. My arms are hurting. I have to get better equipment now that I'm gonna jump back on here, but I'm gonna put this down and I will get back to you guys.